and jewels. Fasten your seatbelts, because my story is wild. But before I start, please like and subscribe, because MSA is giving $10,000 to one lucky winner. Crazy, right? Be sure to spread the word, too. My grandfather owned a bunch of shoe factories, so we were really rich. He wasn't around anymore, but Dad always said he was a great man and we owed everything to him. We had all the luxuries in the world. But growing up, Mom and Dad made sure I stayed grounded. I turned out to be a pretty good kid, if I dare say so myself. I always helped out people around me, was respectful to teachers, and didn't travel much in our private jet to reduce my carbon footprint. My parents were proud of me, and life was great, until I turned 17 and this new girl Amanda joined our class. Amanda was a scholarship student, which meant that she was exceptionally bright and also extremely poor, which didn't sit right with the kids in my school. They constantly made comments on her clothes and looks, but Amanda didn't care. Instead, she worked hard, was always top of our class, and barely paid any attention to what people had to say. I was in awe of how mature she was and even tried talking to her, but she never responded. Then one day, I was on my way home when I saw her struggling with her bike in the parking lot. Hey, is there a problem? Someone punctured my bike tires. I'm late for work and I can't lose out on a day's pay. This is such a mess. I can drop you. Are you sure? Yeah, no problem. And that's how Amanda and I finally had our first conversation. She told me she was an orphan and lived in a foster home nearby. She was just 17 and working two jobs to support herself. You're the bravest person I know. I'd love it if we could be friends. Aren't you too rich to be friends with someone like me? What does that have to do with anything? Amanda smiled, and since then, we became inseparable. <laughs> We'd go to the movies and the mall together, and no matter how much I tried, Amanda would never let me pay for her. But the more Amanda and I got closer, the less time I got to meet my other friends. So when a friend of mine invited me to her birthday, I couldn't say no. I even invited Amanda, but she refused. Your friends look down on me. Some of them have made fun of me to my face and the ones who haven't still make it obvious enough. They can be a bit silly, but trust me, they aren't so bad once you get to know them. We can buy you a nice outfit and do some makeup on you, and you'll be lovelier than ever. No one will make fun of you after that. And what if I don't wear fancy clothes or paint my face with makeup? Your friends can make fun of me then? That's not what I said. You just called me poor and ugly in 10 different languages, Jules. I did not. I just said that if you dress differently for a party, maybe you wouldn't stand out like a sore thumb and fit in better. And once they get to know you, they'll like you. Watching the hurt look on Amanda's face made me instantly regret my words. Then you should be with people who fit in, not a sore thumb like me. Amanda, I, but Amanda just turned around and left. Over the next few days, I tried apologizing to Amanda a million times, but she just refused to talk to me. I really missed Amanda. So one day after school, I decided to visit the cafe she worked at, but she wasn't around. And when she didn't even show up at school the next day, I got really worried. I asked the teacher, and she told me Amanda was on her way to school. When she got hit by a car and had an accident, I panicked and rushed to the hospital to see her and found a lady sitting by her bedside. She told me she was Amanda's foster mom and that apart from a few broken bones and a mild concussion, she was okay and would recover soon. That's a relief. I'm Jules, by the way. Oh. Oh, Amanda's told me about you. I was surprised she'd made a friend. You see, she came close to being adopted a few times and she got her hopes up, but it never went through. I think she's afraid of getting close to anyone. She has no relatives at all? She tried finding them, but didn't have much luck. Maybe you can help. You come from an influential family, right? It would be a dream come true for her. I thought about it. Maybe if I found her family, Amanda would finally see that I'm her friend and she'd have a real home too. So I left my email ID with Amanda's father her mom and asked her for all the information she had on Amanda and her parents so we could start tracing her family. She mailed everything to me soon, and I gave the documents to Dad. He promised he'd look into it, and a few days later, he came back with shocking news. Jules, I don't know how this is possible, but Amanda is your second cousin. What? Dad told me that my grandfather had an older brother who was Amanda's grandfather, and even more shocking was that she was poor because my grandpa hey. stole her grandfather's share of the wealth, which had led to the two families breaking ties. After the dispute, Amanda's grandfather left town and changed the family name. I guess that's why after her parents' accident, no one was able to trace anyone related to Amanda. So, Grandpa was a thief and a liar? You told me he was the nicest man you've ever known. It's what I believed. I didn't know about any of this till I started looking into the matter and consulted the family lawyer. I swear. Well, 
We can't change the past, but we need to tell Amanda the truth now. We can't do that, Jules. You know I'm running for mayor. What if she leaks this information to the media? I can't afford such a big scandal and have people think our business has been built partly on stolen wealth. So we'll just let her rot in a foster home? That's when Dad suggested that he could adopt Amanda and take care of her like family. But I had to promise to keep his discovery a secret. I just wanted Amanda to have a better life like she deserved. And even though I didn't feel good about keeping the truth from her, I agreed. And the next day, Dad went to the hospital with me and spoke to Amanda and her foster mom about adopting her. Amanda was shocked at first, but she eventually agreed. And a week later, she came home with us. I was just helping her unpack when she walked over to me. Jules, thank you. I never expected to find a home. And to have you as my sister is a blessing. Does that mean you've truly forgiven me? Duh, obviously. Amanda and I made up, and we became closer than ever. She helped me with my studies, and I took her shopping. I was glad to have Amanda around, but as time went by, I started noticing a shift in her. She was suddenly a lot more outgoing and outspoken. She burned all of her old clothes and bought an entirely new wardrobe. At home, she'd pass orders to the servants all day long, and at school, she walked around like she owned the place. This one time, Amanda's ex-foster mom came home to visit her, and Amanda refused to come down. But she came all this way just to see you. I don't want to stay in touch with anyone from my old life, and I'm pretty sure she's here for money. That's not fair, Amanda. She was there with you the whole time during your accident. I think she genuinely cares for you. I've been in more foster homes than you can count, Jules, and the one thing I know about these so-called foster moms is that all of them are greedy leeches. Now move aside. I'm watching the new MSA video, and it's literally the most gripping series of all time. It's about these two sisters who go around conning people. I'm learning so much from it about family and sisterhood. Amanda was unrecognizable, and I hated this side of her. But my parents didn't seem to mind at all. In fact, they'd grown really fond of her and were really impressed with how smart she was, especially Dad. At first, I thought he was just being nice because he felt guilty. But then he asked her to join his campaign for the upcoming mayor elections. Amanda was managing his social media, finances, speeches, everything and I just felt invisible. I wanted Dad to see that I was equally capable. So a week later, during one of his campaign dinners, I decided to start a conversation at the table. So, elections are almost here, huh? Everyone must be so nervous. Actually, I'm not nervous at all. I'm sure Dad will win. That's because I have you to look after the campaign. No, Dad, you're the true genius. The way you spoke about our city's economy and its complex ecosystem of interconnected factors blew my mind. Yes, Dad! <laughs> love that journey for you. But as I was saying, oh, and when you spoke about the devastating effects of poultry on our environment, I was so moved. Same. But, you know, in the orphanage, we woke up at six to collect chicken eggs. And sometimes these chickens would just run all over the place, tossing their eggs around. It was so difficult to chase them, put them back in their cages, and get these eggs. I'm having flashbacks. That's really sad. But can you shut it for a second so I can talk? Jules, what's wrong with you? Can't you see Amanda's crying? And can't you see I'm trying to say something and she keeps butting in with her sob stories? Which makes zero sense, by the way. You don't know. You are there. And before I could say anything else, Amanda ran to her room and Dad went behind her. And all the guests were looking at me disapprovingly. Amanda and I didn't speak after that. And with time, I only grew more distant. I started staying away from home, got in touch with my old friends, skipped school, and went out partying. For the first time in a long time, I felt included. But soon, my grades started getting affected. And when I failed some major tests, Dad was not happy. I can't believe you failed. Look at Amanda. She had nothing growing up and turned out so smart. Why can't you be more like her? Because I'm not her, Dad. I know you feel guilty that Amanda lost her part of the property because of Grandpa, but why are you overcompensating so much? Get a grip, dude. I don't know what's gotten into you these days. You're grounded. I wanted to argue more, but Dad got a phone call and left. I was still sulking in my room when I got a call from one of my friends about a party, and I decided to sneak out after dinner. But later that night, when I came back home, I found Amanda waiting for me in my room. Well, hello there. Oh my God, you scared me. What are you doing here? Waiting for you, of course. So, how was the party? I hope you had fun because it's the last time you're going out. Once mom and dad find out that you disobeyed them, they'll ground you for life. Don't you think you're taking this too far? You know, you're not actually part of the family, right? My parents felt sorry for you and took you in. Then why do I feel such a strong connection to your dad? Actually, he kind of looks like my dad. I've only ever seen one photo, but the resemblance is uncanny.
Penny. She had a really strange expression on her face. It must be a coincidence. Are you sure about that? Yeah. What else? Amanda just shrugged and turned away. But for some reason, I felt really uneasy. I couldn't sleep the whole night. And the next morning when I woke up, Amanda was gone. Her room was empty. Her clothes were gone. And it looked like she never even lived here. I immediately called her, but it went straight to voicemail. I called Dad, but he had no idea either. The entire week, we searched for Amanda everywhere. I tried calling her friends, her old foster mom, even the orphanage she once lived in, but no one had any idea where she was. I'd almost lost hope when one morning, I woke up to loud banging noises. I went downstairs and saw Dad and the servants holding the main door to stop people from barging in. What's happening? Who are these people? I'll tell you later. Just go to your room and call the police. The cops arrived within minutes and got rid of the crowd, after which Dad explained everything. He told me how Amanda had found out the truth about her grandfather and told the media how my family's wealth was built by stealing from her family. She also accused us of hiding the truth from her so we didn't have to give her anything. It's a huge scandal, Jules. Amanda is suing us and I have to step down for my candidacy too. Those people out there were reporters trying to get more information. But how did Amanda even know? Our family lawyer had given me a file with all the property dispute papers and a bunch of pictures and it's all missing. Amanda had access to my office so I guess she must have stolen it. But I don't get it. We were nothing but nice to her and she stabbed us in the back. Dad, we should have told Amanda the truth. Maybe then she wouldn't have told the media. Now we have to face what's happened. The next couple of days were a mess. Dad and Amanda fought each other in court, and eventually, it was decided that Dad would have to part with one third of his property. I didn't care about the property, but what hurt me the most was that Amanda didn't talk to me, not even once. Time went by, and my parents and I eventually recovered from the loss. I never heard from Amanda again, but she was always there in the back of my mind. Soon after, I moved out for college and decided to join Dad's shoe business. I was in Bora Bora for a vacation when I heard a familiar voice. I always knew you were a beach bum. Amanda? What are you doing here? How have you been? Remember I told you about that con sister MSA video? That inspired me to check this place out and I fell in love with it. So I opened a small sushi place and life's good. I'm happy to hear that. Listen, I don't know what to say or how to apologize, but I'm really sorry for how things turned out. I'm sorry for not talking earlier. I was excited about getting adopted and getting attention. It hurt when my relatives lied to me. And you were my friend too. I lied to protect my dad, but that was wrong. Our family's actions are unforgivable, but we're still related. I want you in my life. I think I'd like that too.